Hey guys, I'm back. Um, I have had a lot of requests from all of you guys to do some videos about buck knives. Do I do I like buck knives? Do I have buck knives? Would I do some reviews on buck knives? And you know, it's not that I have been avoiding buck knives. As a matter of fact, I think that if you think about pocket knives, I mean, really the quintessential EDC pocket knife is is buck. You can't have a knife collection without a buck knife in it. I mean, they are, it's one of the originals. I mean, as a matter of fact, you know, talking about the history of buck knives, which is really cool. Um, this company started in a little town called Mountain Home, Idaho, which is kind of cool because I spent eight years of my Air Force career at Mountain Home Air Force Base. And what really started buck knives as like a real, you know, a large knife brand was, and I can't remember the, the actual, you know, the guy's name, Mr. Buck. Uh, he was a uh, pastor out at a small church just outside of Mountain Home Air Force Base. I guess back then it was Mountain Home Air Station or Airfield, Army Airfield back then. When the war started, World War II, they had a giant need for knives for troops. And he was able to, in the basement of the church, turn out 2,000 folding knives to equip troops deploying, you know, all over the place. And that's kind of where, where the Buck Knife Company came from. So I want to talk about Buck Knives, but I want to sort of look at not their more traditional stuff. I want to look at kind of the modern day Buck Knives. I want to look at some of my favorite ones, but also uh, I don't know if advanced is the right word to use, but they've come a long, long way. So this is an after uh, video shoot edit. I realized I forgot to do my shout outs for this video. So let me throw these in here. EDC with Aaron has a, a young new channel. Uh, I, I like some of the stuff going on there. So you guys might want to check that out. Anders Aho missed Anders' birthday on the 25th. Sorry about that, Anders. Uh, but there's a birthday shout out for you. Radiated Survivors. Icy McNugget has been around my channel commenting and uh, sharing good opinions on videos for, uh, God, I don't even know how long. I think since we were at like 3,000 subscribers. So shout out for you, LegitGamer22 and Keith O'Reilly. So thanks guys for uh, supporting this channel and, you know, always being involved. Um, I recognize every one of the names uh, um, on the shout out list today as always taking part in discussions and commenting and uh, always contributing. So thanks a lot. Now, you know, for me, guys, when you think about or when I think about it anyway, what is the classic, the kind of great granddaddy of all pocket knives? You, you've you got to think of the, the Buck 110. I think that a lot of us, when you think of like just the, the concept of a pocket knife, this is exactly what comes to mind. Now, this has been copied over and over and over in history. Even Buck has um, come up with a lot of different variations on their own design. Uh, there are special edition ones. There are different combinations of colors and materials that you can get. Um, and you know, the Buck 110, this it's a classic, it is. Uh, and in my opinion, no knife collection is complete. Just, I mean, you're missing something if you don't have one of these, just to say that you have like the well, I want to say gold standard, you know, ironically speaking, brass standard, we'll say. But I mean, this is this is kind of once upon a time. This is this is the knife that everybody has. I have one because traditionally, I you know, I, have, I feel like I have to have one. Not my favorite design. Not even close. To be honest, it is a good design. It's a great clip point blade. I don't like the lock back on this at all. It. I just I'm not a fan of lock back knives, but. I feel like my collection would not at all be complete without the Buck 110. And you know, another thing about these knives, they're so well built. And um, while Buck knives, some are made in the USA, most are made in the USA, some are made overseas, all the 110s are made in the USA. And they are so well made that it is completely common that, you know, people will have these knives in their families for generations. I had a troop when I first moved to Florida, um, you know, we were talking about knives. He asked me if I could um, kind of clean one of his knives up and sharpen it for him, and it was a buck 110. 
and it was old and it was abused and you know I don't know the history of this thing and I asked him like what have you been doing with this thing and I said he told me I haven't done anything with it it's just been in my family for years and I said really he said yeah this was my great-grandfather's knife and I honestly haven't used it at all but I'd like to and a little bit of brasso to shine it up just uh, running it over a whetstone a little bit I mean the thing was as good as new so while it's not my favorite design the thing is this knife was designed and built to last and you just can't argue with that so anyway we've got the classic buck knife but there are so many others available and because I've got so many requests we're gonna look at some of my favorites from kind of the modern buck lineup this is the 871 this goes back a little bit to uh, a day when Buck and Strider, before Strider was like really the big, super high-end kind of knife that it is today, uh, Buck used to make Strider knives. And as a matter of fact, if you find a, a Buck edition Strider knife today, it's worth a lot, a lot of money. So this was something that they made kind of back then. It is in the Strider style. Um, it, it is not one of the Buck Strider knives. This one's not made in America, this one's made in China. But you've got some basic G10 scales. Actually, I shouldn't say basic. It's got some nice layered G10 scales. It's a nice, simple liner lock. Um, it's just got an interesting shape to it. It's pretty comfortable. It's a decent size for EDC. Not a big fan of the clip. It leaves a lot sticking out in your pocket. But weight-wise and feel, it is a good, solid knife. This was actually um, one of the first what I call modern buck knives I, you know, I ever owned. Uh, this is still available, even though this is like long out of production. You can find these on eBay relatively cheap. That's where I found mine, and it's you know very smooth. It's not loose smooth. It's got a little bit of tension in it, so it's not going to fly open like on all on its own. But when you want to open it, it's very smooth. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's just that perfect balance. The rest of these I've all bought fairly recently. Buck does make some great, large, camping, hunting, survival type fixed blade knives. This is a relatively small one. I got this one by accident. So this is the 857. Uh, another thing I like about Buck, by the way, is it's very clear. You'll see that all their blades are stamped either USA or wherever they're made. Um, I think this is the only other one that's not made in the USA that we're going to look at today. When I saw this one, I, I saw it online and I was going mainly off of uh, blade style uh, when I was ordering it because I wanted to get something else specifically for this video and based on the size I was reading dimensions of the blade I kind of I didn't do my research effectively and I thought this was a folding knife I didn't realize that this was a fixed blade so this is a pretty small fixed blade I know there are some folks out there that like to EDC fixed blades this would be a pretty good one for that purpose it's, it's unobtrusive it's lightweight. It actually, I find that the scabbard right here is very bulky for my taste for the size of the knife itself. Um, when I say it's unobtrusive, I'm speaking of the knife itself. This is a pretty thick, pretty big scabbard for such a small knife. So, you know, this is kind of on you if this is something you want to carry. What's cool though is that you can adjust your, uh, your fixed belt loop here for the position you want it in. You can loosen this up and rotate that through 360 degrees and kind of carry it in the style you want. And it's very secure the way it locks in here. It's got plastic scales. It only comes in orange, but it's got a really nice texture right up front there to really give you a good grip. And this jimping is very functional. Uh, you can really get a good finger hold on there. You know, again, like when I looked at the pictures online, I saw this and I thought it was a flipper. It just, it, it got me. I, I, did, I did not do research. I did not read into it. I, I said, you know what? That's exactly the kind of blade style that I would use. I saw this. I assumed it was, you know, a thumb hole with a flipper. Um, lesson learned. What do I always say? Don't go off of looks. And that's what I did. It is something I'm likely to put in our big giveaway because I like this knife a lot in terms of uh, its functionality. It's just not the kind of thing that I am ever likely to carry myself. But it's a good example of kind of the variety that Buck gives you. Good example of what's available from the company. 
and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy seeing this given away once that damn moving truck gets here and we can uh, do the giveaway. All right, moving on to the Buck 780. This is a really cool knife as far as I'm concerned. Number one, I love the blade shape there. Um, this is a made in China one, but this one strikes me as almost like a more affordable Gripillion kind of. So the weight is great. It is really smooth. It's a super smooth knife. I mean, the, the thumb hole opening right there, a little small, but still very smooth. And that's not bearings. That's just washers in there. You've got um, plastic scales over these steel liners. So you've got your hard textured inset there, but a rubberized coating all around. So this really lets you get a really good grip, even though it doesn't have any real functional jimping to speak of, really get a good grip on that knife. It's got a deep carry clip. So most of this knife sits securely in your pocket with just a little bit sticking out if you want to put a lanyard on it or something. But the grind on the blade is really, really good. And the blade shape and the blade style I found is effective for, for so many different tasks and so many different purposes. So this knife um, I've actually carried quite a few times just, you know, to get a sense for it. It's, it's just, even though it's made in China, and this kind of goes to what I'm saying. I have a reputation, I think, uh, you know, online as being a China hater because of the stupid knife box video. I'm not a China hater. I hate cheap factories in China that put out cheap, crappy materials and stuff. This is a great example of a Chinese made product, but where it's done well. Not everything that comes out of China has to be a piece of crap. If, if they're willing to spend a little bit more money on good tooling and good materials and good quality standards, a great product can come out of China. And this is one of them. And so, you know, Buck as a company, I don't think would put their name on one of those low quality piece of crap Chinese products, you know? So less expensive than one of their American made counterparts, we get all of the good that is the Buck brand name in a cheaper pack. And for those of you who I've seen commenting that say you'd, you'd like a group killing, but you can't afford or something like this, check out the Buck 780. Now let's step up a little bit price-wise from that. Here's the Buck 715. This is an all made, all made in the USA product. It's really light, all aluminum frame and everything. It's another uh, buck lock back design. They love lock backs. Again, not a fan of the clip. I love deep carry clips. I like having a knife that sits all the way in the pocket, but bead blasted, anodized aluminum, and then, you know, just from a style point, look at the really nice way that they've milled out that design and the way that, you know, the contrast of that bright, shiny aluminum looks um, on the anodized bead blasted area. It's just a very slim, easy carry, easy to open with one hand, nice blade shape. And I'll tell you, um, this thing comes out of the package so incredibly razor sharp. And you've got a beautiful satin finish on the blade too. So if you want something that looks nice, something that is very functional, very light for EDC, but has a really nice look to it as well, the 715 is a great way to go. Drawbacks, my opinion only on a knife like this, because you've got that anodized bead blasted um, aluminum finish, this thing is a scratch magnet. Anything that shows where it hurt. Now, if you want a user that shows, you know, you like that kind of used look, then this is the this is the guy for you. Because anything that, that comes in contact with this frame is gonna scratch it and it's gonna start exposing the, the bare aluminum beneath the anodize and the bead blast and it's going to show wear and tear very easily. So kind of two sides of the coin. If you like your knife to, to look pretty, and you know, I, I mean, this is a pretty knife. It, it looks really, really nice. Very functional, but also good looking. So might not be something for your daily carry if you don't want it to look beat up. But if you want a user, number one, this thing will put through, go through a fair amount of use. But if you want something that will show that life, that character, that wear and tear, and you're proud of that, Think about this, I've carried it a few times, and like, so for example, back in the days when I was in dress uniform, uh, light, slim, can fit in the inside jacket pocket, 
And you know what? From from a looks point of view, it kind of fits in with the Air Force dress uniform too, right? So uh, I, I thought it was a good choice for that. Now, a great step up from there. This is a collaboration between Buck and Topps. Topps makes some phenomenal, high-quality bushcraft and uh, field-type knives. This is the Seesaw. Fits into the rescue category, I think. So starting off, all right, starting off, I don't like the clip. I'm going to say that again. It's kind of, I find the placement odd. I understand they're kind of limited to, to what they've got going on, but I also think they could have if they wanted to engineer it differently. If you put this clip in your pocket, look at all that. You have over an inch of knife and everything that sticks up out of there. Um, so, okay, I don't like the clip placement, but they do give you this really nice sheath. I mean, it's a nice sheath. Um, it's got molly attachment on it, and you can also hook it onto something, and it has the ability to be worn on a belt loop as well. And look, you've got two options for belts, a thin belt and a wide belt, and then your molly attachment. So lots of different options for the sheath. The knife itself, it's 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 a beast. Um, so starting with, you've got a glass breaker on the end, and it's not one of those little glued on carbide pieces. It is just this, the solid stainless steel of the knife. So it's not gonna break off. You're not gonna lose it. You've got a line cutter. It is, is not a gut hook. I got into a discussion with somebody. Could use it as a gut hook, sure, I guess you could. But this is a rescue knife. You've got a line cutter there for seat belts, or I've used it very effectively for 550 cord. I mean, it is like a knife through butter. It's, it's awesome. Can you see just brass washers, right? There's no bearings in here at all. Super, I mean, smooth as anything. And this knife, the blade is designed to be functional. It is a nice, thick tip on the blade. It's designed so you can use this to pry with. You'll notice there's not like a really sharp tip for you to break off. It's got lots of steel right there up front. So it's uh, almost a sheep's foot design. So you can use it to kind of cut around stuff with somebody extricating them. And make sure the markings on the blade. 154 cm steel on the blade i haven't seen a boss heat treat label in a while last time i saw that i think it was on a strider knife but um boss is, is a i mean fantastic heat treat they make some of the best heat treats for blades so this blade is not only made of really good steel i mean it is going to be sturdy and tough as all hell so although i haven't done it i i can speak with as much confidence as I could about any blade. This thing is going to be good and sturdy for cutting, for chopping, slicing, uh, and that edge is going to hold as good as as any rescue knife you've ever had. I often comment about the you know the size of a liner lock. I think that for a knife that's made for hard use rescue purposes, I might want a slightly thicker lock on it, just to make sure I'm really holding on to that that lock very firmly, especially if I'm going to be banging the blade around. But it works. The weight on it, I can't remember if I said this already, is great. And, you know, the texturing of the G10 makes it very comfortable and lets you get a really good grip. And the jimping right up here really grabs into your thumb. It's it's a really good feeling. I wish I had this for an actual deployment, though, just to check it out. Uh, another feature, and it looks like a lanyard hole, but this is actually a bit hole. So Buck makes a whole set of bits with a little extension. You put them in there, and then this becomes, you know, a little wrench for using whatever bits. But you can use any standard size bits that fit in there. Uh, so this sheath really doesn't offer carry capacity for that. But, I mean, you could easily put them in a separate container, um, a separate pouch, whatever. This is, I think, one of the most functional high-speed tools that Buck makes. Um, we're going camping here in a few weeks. Uh, this is, I'm taking this one with me because I'm dying to try it out. I got this one just recently. I didn't even know that they made this one. From, you know, my experience just kind of using it around in the backyard and everything and um, basic utility work, this is a really, really great addition to the Buck lineup. Now, of course, if I wanted to do a video on every knife Buck makes, we're gonna be here all night long. Buck really is one of the oldest names in, in pocket knives. I just really wanted to uh, get this video out there because a lot of you viewers have requested that I that I do a video and look at some Buck knives or you know talk about my feelings about Buck knives and 
Um, this is really, it's like, you know, it, it, I think Buck is to the world of knives what Henry Ford was to the world of, of cars and factory production. I mean, maybe I'm being a little overdramatic about it, but that's really what I feel. I feel like it's, it's one of the classic companies in the industry. So I hope that this is uh, cool, that this is for those of you who have, who have wanted to see you know, a little video about Buck Knives. I didn't just want to rehash the same old classics. I wanted to do something a little bit different and talk about my favorites and maybe show you some that you don't see all the time. So if there's some that I missed, you know, please go ahead and comment and, you know, we'll do a follow-up video to this in a little bit. These have to live in the collection, but this one will definitely be getting into the hands of uh, one of you subscribers when we do our big giveaway coming up soon. So, all right, that being said, still adjusting to this whole thing you called cold weather up here in the Northeast. So I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna warm up and get a little toasty. But as always, you guys are awesome. I appreciate you. I'll be back again real soon.